Well, here we go again. Because so many of you have asked me for it, I have got together another bunch of clips and we're gonna do a part two to the venomous snake TikTok video. Let's dive in. That was close that time. I Me, mean, I'd probably let it go and call it a day. So that was a girl getting on a trampoline and the tiny thing you see there is actually a baby copperhead that gets her on the foot. Always goes to show, be really careful with tarps and stuff like that in your area if you have venomous snakes around because they love hiding on them, under them and near them. I've seen that one so many times and it still looks fake to me. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is a coastal taipan and they're in the top five most venomous snakes in the world and we're about to milk it. Have a go at this. They've got one of the largest venom yields of any of our venomous snakes in Australia. And the biggest set of fangs, they can be almost 10 mil in length and look at how much venom that is. And pretty crazy to think that venom's gonna go towards saving human lives. I love the way Aussies can hold a ridiculously venomous snake and just be so happy and excited about it. It's incredible. <laughs> Handling huge venomous snakes is, is already a risky idea, but when you add water into the mix, you're adding another factor there. They're always going to be faster than you and more agile in water, so that's a no-go for me. I can tell you that I was diagnosed with hepatitis C. There was no question about it. This old boy had it. About a week before I had to go in and start getting my treatment, the spirit fell down in this little place. Woo! When I went back, the doctor said, You don't need no treatment, boy, because I can't find it in your system. Hey, there's healing power. Hmm. So those guys were dancing with timber rattlers, look like. Um, I don't really, I mean me, I've got no problem with religion, no problem with hillbillies either. Uh, I just really don't know what that was about. I don't know what the belief is behind dancing with rattlesnakes. I mean, was it the rattlesnakes that cured his hepatitis C? Or, I'm not sure. I'm gonna need some help in the comments from this one, I think. Water? I'll insane it. Let that be. Monster, Dragon King GoPro, insane. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful of your Vegas Hannah. Isn't it weird how King Cobras get such a terrible deal? They're the world's largest venomous snake and everyone wants to like grab them round, manhandle them, tease them, make them open their mouth. I mean, all the things they're doing show they're not happy. And if you were doing it with a kitten or a dog, someone would go crazy at you. Now this guy, he handles them in a way that I wouldn't. I mean, sometimes I wonder if free handling leads to bites, which leads to potentially the hobby getting banned in more areas. But when I first saw him, I thought, here we go, here's another snake teaser or whatever. But then I noticed that the snakes calm down while he's handling them. So something's going on there. He's got some kind of skill. And I think they're more calm with him than any of the other big names I've seen on the internet since doing these videos. <laughs> That woman is free handling a Gaboon Viper in a classroom full of children. Needless to say, don't free handle Gaboon Vipers. I'm a bit confused about that clip because I've heard people say that was, you know, a really irresponsible thing to do. And then I've heard other people say that that snake was actually a venomoid, meaning that it had its either fangs or venom glands removed. I'm really not sure what the story behind that one is. So that's the same guy that was handling the snouted cobra 
two clips back that I said they calm down while he handles them. There he's handling a Mangshan Pit Viper and the thing is really, really calm. So whatever it is, he's got some kind of skill with them. If you ever come across a snake like this, just remember red and black, friend of Jack, red and yellow, kill a fellow. This is a coral snake, very venomous. Yeah, so let's just add to that. That only works in the States. Anywhere else in the world, do not listen to that rule. Just don't touch it if it's got red, yellow, black in any combination. So that was a Wrinkles performing Thanatosis or playing dead. See, wrinkles, they're portrayed as being really nasty, but they're actually quite reasonable. Often they'll play dead before actually biting you, although they will sort of spray venom in your eyes before you get that close quite often. Yeah, that's about as close as you probably want to get to a spin cover right there. <sighs> Every single time, it makes a jolt, even though I feel completely protected behind this shield. Cody Peterson does such stupid stuff that is barely, barely able to be considered educational, but at the same time he's really likeable. It's a, it's a, it's a hard mix to criticize. I've been bitten by venomous snakes a couple times. We were milking sea snakes and I had sea snake venom on my fingers and then I went like this in an argument with my director of photography and thought I'd rubbed sea snake venom in my eyes, which would have killed me, but I didn't know. And there was no way to tell because we were nowhere near cell phone service or internet or anything else. So I couldn't figure it out. So I just had to wait six hours to see if I lived or died. And You're still here. <laughs> still here, yeah. <laughs> I would have thought if you rubbed any kind of venom, even if it's broadly neurotoxic in your eyes, um, that you would have symptoms before six hours. And I would have thought that it would make your vision blurry, perhaps affect some of the muscles that contract parts of your eyes and stuff like that. Um, so that's a bit of an unusual story right there. Local man who was nearly killed while trying to take a selfie with a rattlesnake tells us he actually had a pet rattlesnake. Now this is what Todd Fassler's wound looked like after a rattlesnake he picked up from some brush bit him. Doctors depleted the anti-venom stash at two different hospitals to treat Fassler. He racked up a hospital bill of more than one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Wow! Just the bill alone lets you know it was a major case of envenomation. There's so many repercussions if you get bitten by a venomous snake. You won't generally die, especially in a country like the U.S. with good healthcare. You're probably not going to die, but you could have the function of one of your limbs affected. You could end up in debt for a long time. You could end up out of work for a long time. Me, I've got animals and people that rely on me, and that's kind of what put me off free handling snakes, even though I have done it and I wouldn't lie about it now. Most people think that if a venomous snake bites you, you die, but that's not always true. The Inland Taipan has a 100% fatality rate without anti-venom, so if you get bit, you better go to the hospital, or you will die. On the other hand, the blue in Solaris is not nearly as deadly. Without anti-venom, it would probably be around a 10 to 25% fatality rate. The Bushmaster also has a 100% fatality rate without anti-venom. Although this, on the other hand, also has a 70% fatality rate, even if you're treated with anti-venom. The eyelash vipers on the lower end of the spectrum, like me. If you get bit, your chance of death is really low, probably around 5 to 10%. If you get bit by a Gaboon Viper, you definitely need to get anti-venom. Without it, you'll definitely lose whatever limb was bit, and you'll probably still die also. Not a lot of people are bit by Mang Shen Vipers due to the fact they're only found on a small mountain range in China. So we'll give it around a 50% chance. A Cobra Bite would be really bad without anti-venom. Your odds of dying without anti-venom are probably around the 70 to 80% rate. But if you get anti-venom, it's gonna drop dramatically. Although Steve here would never hurt a fly. He's way too nice to do that. So Bushmaster Venom has several components that do several different things. So it's definitely a multifactorial venom and it's also one that varies from region to region. So it's very hard to make an effective anti-venom against it. Lots of those snakes on the list you don't want to get bitten by. Personally, the one that scares me is the Gaboon Viper. See, the problem with vipers is that they, by nature, when left alone, you know, like to mind their own business, but when they're pressed or when they feel threatened, they are quick to struggle, quick to strike. And I don't want to be bit by the snake, but I also don't want the snake to injure himself. Okay, he could do that. He could easily puncture his own flesh with those two very large fangs to the front of his mouth. I'm 
using my fingers, I've got my thumb and middle finger on either side of the jaw. I've got my index finger supporting his head, but he's really moving around a lot. I'm afraid he's going to injure himself. That was Jeff Corwin. He's one of my favorite TV animal personalities. I've been watching him since I was a kid. I love the way he handles snakes. He handles them correctly. He doesn't injure them. Something I see a lot, which I'm not going to lie, kind of gets on my nerves, is people who get like a BSc or something, declare themselves an expert or a consultant or whatnot, and then proceed to show us on the internet how to handle snakes. And every time you see them, they've got a snake and they're choking it across the windpipe like that and showing us, you know, demonstrations. Jeff Corwin really, really knows his stuff and he knows how to handle them correctly. So that is how you handle them correctly when you can. The king cobras are quite fast, um, so they, it can get quickly out of control if you're not doing this uh, properly and safely. Get this out of the way. Thank you. So we have the snake uh, backed up uh, and it's uh, double boxed. So we're going to do everything in reverse order. We're just going to get out on the floor in the back, safely undo the, um, the knot on the back, use the grabbers and just feed it through the hats there and let them in. We do a lot of in-house training, we do drills, uh, we have uh, anti-venom stored as well. So uh, yeah, we just make sure we're all fully confident in uh, handling these animals. And uh, like I said, we try to minimize it just for our sake and the animal's sake as well, because obviously they, they, they can get easily stressed as well. That was pretty cool, seeing how easy and safe it can be to move some of these animals and handle them. Obviously, if they need to do like a medical exam on it, it would be a bit different. That's probably the kind of handling I'd go for most of the time. Anyway, that's gonna do it for today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do like and subscribe and please come back next week for another one. Thanks.